I feel like every couple of weeks I come back here and I sit down and I have some sad thing to tell you guys or something dark or things that I'm afraid will make you sick of me, which is ridiculous, especially because of today's video. Sometimes I just feel like I'm really bad at being an influencer and sharing the things that are going on and I feel like it's because I have all these different role models that I follow and it's just it's, it's bright and it's happy and it's fun all the time and sorry that's the kind of content that I like to create when people ask me what I do I say I want to give people a little bit of a break from their day to day because I feel like life is hard and then there's the question of compared to what just over two weeks ago now a friend of mine, and I'm going to use this terminology because I am trying to stay within YouTube's guidelines, but a friend of mine decided to um, unsubscribe from life. I was in Texas. Um, I was actually with Call Me Chris and Taylor and Jay, and we were talking to our friend. We were texting him, and it's crazy to just kind of go back to the messages now. He hadn't talked to us in a few days, and he had honestly given us an answer. He just said that he wasn't handling something really well, and he said, mentally, I'm... And he did the squiggly eye face, and we sent back a message saying that, we're so sorry that you're so sad. And then the conversation went on like normal. Like, it just changed. He changed. He went from that to, oh, what are you doing? And let me catch a flight, and it would be, it would be so fun. The last time that I talked to him before this, I had sent a message and I said, I'm so sorry you're going through this. If you need to talk, I'm here. Anything you need, I'm so sorry. And then we were in Texas and the, and the conversation was nice and we were sending each other pictures back and forth. And the last thing he said, and he said, how's your trip? And I say, good. One more ghost hunt. How's the apple trees? After that, it was silent. It was crazy because Taylor, you guys know him, him and Matt were wonderful. They were funny together and it was, it was fun. We met, I said his name. I don't want to say his name. I want to respect the privacy of his family. Because I didn't know them. He was a new person that we met at Toronto at a drag bar and we had met him a few times and every single time he was definitely the brightest light in the room. He was funny and charismatic and wonderful and I never would have guessed. I never would have guessed. He told us but I still never would have thought that it would have gone that far. I remember going into that weekend we were like why hasn't he texted us back? He used to watch our Instagram stories like, oh, maybe he has this on mute. What could we have done? What did we do? We were sitting at a diner on a Tuesday and I had just texted him. I just put, excuse me. And it wouldn't deliver. We were joking back and forth on all the reasons and what we may have done. And we knew we hadn't done anything. So I went on his Instagram page and I saw that he had all these comments under one of his pictures. I was sitting there in this diner with Taylor and I am about to tell him something that I have never had to tell anyone before in my life. We were joking and we were having fun and I had my phone and I was like this and I just put it down and Taylor knew and he said, what happened? What, what was that? And I'm like, oh, I swallowed wrong. So I'm texting Adam and I'm like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know if I can do this, if I can tell him this. So Taylor really, really adored him. And then, of course, I looked to my right. What car? What car did I decide to drive that day to the diner? The hearse. <laughs> Thanks, God. <sighs> so we leave and we get in the hearse and I literally can't not. So I pull over and I'm like, you know, I love you, right? <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, like what? Like he's freaking out. He's like, what? And I'm like, he's gone. And he didn't believe me. And then I had to show him and... um. We had a really hard time wrapping our heads around it. 
We only met him a few times, but he had made such a huge impact on our lives. And Taylor really wanted to go to the visitation in the funeral, but I just didn't, I didn't feel like I should be there. Because we only met him a few times, but I'm really glad we went. Because we saw how supported he was. And we saw what a beautiful family that he came from. But after being to that funeral, I know that I, no matter how bad things get in my life, I would never do that. After what I saw... We were in the procession line to give our condolences. And his father grabbed Taylor and he said, you need to love yourself for who you are, no matter whose that is, and perfect the way that you are. And then I met his mother And she knew who I was, and she said something that really shook me. She said that that night, which was the night he stopped talking to us in Texas, they were watching my podcast, and that he said, that's my friend. Every time we hung out, we were at a bar, and we were drinking, and I wish we would have had the opportunity to hang out with him and just do, like... Just do like normal stuff. And like maybe he could have told us how he was actually feeling. And his aunt said that like sometimes you just don't know how someone's dealing with things. And sometimes people just can't get over things. We knew he was dealing with some things. The day of the funeral... They had to, like, carry his mother in. And it was the saddest thing I've ever seen. For any life to be lost is horrible. With someone in their 20s with so much light, like, anybody, but, like, this person, he... He was the zestiest human being that I can can ever explain like he was just he was so magnetic I only met him a few times and it really it hit me and I've been through I've been through a lot of loss but it was just hard to see someone who I would have considered strong I consider myself strong and I wouldn't have said that a few years ago But I know that I've been through a lot of things and have I been there? Real close. Real close. And that's why I keep my circle so unbelievably small. I have a really hard time trusting people and I feel like that's because I have an incredible judge of character. Like, That's why Chris and I are such good friends because her and I have lived through a lot of the same things and we see things the same way and we read people the same way. Maybe to some people it might come off as, you know, shy or not rude, but quiet. And it's because I've seen all the different ways that people can be treated. It's a sad video today, but I'm hoping that you take from it some strength because life is so weird. And I have these fights sometimes where like, I don't know what I believe in religiously But I have things, when I go through really hard things, I'm like, how can something be out there for us and let such bad things happen? But I think everything lies in how we treat each other and the respect that we have for each other and the golden rule that we treat people as we want to be treated. Because that's all that we really have is our word and our tact and there's a lot of fake people out there and people ask me why I haven't moved to LA or why I haven't done these things and the truth is 
there's such a divide when it comes to this industry of people who are genuine and, and people who are not. And I'm like a country girl from a small town. And I don't feel like I'm ever really going to fit into that box. And that's why I say like I feel like I'm bad at being an influencer. Because I don't post everything because it's not all glitz and fun. And there's a lot of tears and a lot of anger. But like last week, going there... I think I learned a lot about myself and I learned how to treat people. You got one chance here. You have, you're going to be here for one time. You're going to be here for 80 years and then it's going to be over. And you're going to go through the best and the worst of it. And the thing to always remember is, yes, horrible things are going to happen again. We're not going to coast through life. We're not just going to go through easily and nothing bad is going to happen. No, we're going to have horrible things. But you know what else hasn't happened? The best things, the best things haven't happened. When people want to check out, when they want to just hit that unsubscribe on life, I think they're just so caught in what happened that they can't see what's yet to come. Because no matter how stuck that you feel you are, no matter how stuck you feel, you are literally one decision away from changing it all. Like, if you're willing to do that, then instead, why don't you take some huge leap of faith and change it all up and see what happens? This man. I will never understand. And even though I've been in that position before and I've been that close and I could understand... After seeing his family, I don't think that I understand anymore. We get so caught up in the media and what we think we're supposed to do and, and look like and be like. And we get so caught up in um, what we think other people think of us and what they've done to us and what we could have done to deserve what they did to us. But you didn't do anything to deserve what they did to you. People's reactions and actions a lot of the time have nothing to do with you. They have to do with how they were treated, how they were received. It doesn't have anything to do with you. I used to be so absolutely caught up in the things that happened when I was younger, in the relationships that I had with some people in my family. And I would lay awake at night and cry and just be like, how could they have treated me like that? I was a child. Because I knew I would never. And they say, well, you were a difficult child. I was a child. And I don't know his whole story. And I never will. And when somebody leaves in that way, you have so many questions. Especially me, I, I want to know all of it. But it's not my story. It's not for me to know. But when somebody leaves like that, they leave this wave that changes everybody. And like I said, I, I barely knew him. And that wave reached me. It's like falling back to the murder of Victoria Stafford. I never met that little girl. But I was on trial at her murder. And that is a wave that has affected me every day since then. In closing, all I can say to you is that life is weird. And it's good, and it's bad, and it's funny, and it's sad, but you're not gonna stay where you are. And I can promise you that those ups and downs will come, but you'll be different. And when it comes to all the young people that are watching this, I promise you, 
that when you get into your 20s, things do change in your brain. Things that I can never explain to you. And you can deal with things better and you can process things better. But I just need you to get there. Because as an influencer, (laughs) I have a responsibility. We all get those messages that are like, you're the first person in my life I've ever related to. Or I feel seen by you. Or you saved me because of this. And I've met people in real life who have said it to me. And what you guys don't realize is that you guys have saved me too. Before all of this happened, I was very lost. I had a very sick husband. I was going to almost lose my house. I was in a free fall and I didn't see a single way out. I didn't. I knew that the rest of my life was going to be hard because they told me that when I was little. They told my parents, she's going to live a hard life. And then one day I made a choice to just start being wild and myself on the internet. And then I found everyone else who didn't fit into. I just want to say... Please stay and don't go and you are perfect the way that you are. I want to say a big rest in peace to him because your light will shine on forever and I don't want that to be cliche. It's just honest. Honest. 